Hello and welcome to the latest installment of Super Data Science's custom chart tutorial series. In today's tutorial, this is actually going to be part two of working with hex bins. So we left off from our basic tutorial at this point. So if you haven't had a chance to view and work through that tutorial yet, please go back and review part one. That will get you up to this point, and then we'll be able to work and go forward in this tutorial working on the advanced techniques. So the advanced techniques we're going to introduce today are a way to make your hex bin charts more flexible and more accessible. The thing is, with this view, it works, but there's a couple limitations. The first off being, we don't actually know where this is showing up. So this is just a clear black background, a solid black background, sorry. And what it's doing is it's creating the shape of the US, which is really nice. But suppose you actually wanted to see underlying state boundaries to figure out, okay, where, what is going on between these two hexagons? How do we know what's important about this one versus that one? Is it something to do with states, geography, who knows? The thing is on a blank background, it doesn't really help us with that. Second of all, if we wanted to zoom in and maybe highlight one area, as soon as you zoom in, you lose your spacing that you've worked on. So you have to come in, you have to mess with the size, increase the size of your hex bins to make it so that it looks a little bit like we have what we had before. These are a couple major limitations and we want to show off a few advanced techniques to make it so that you have a more flexible and accessible chart for people. Before we do that though, I want to give credit where credit is due. The technique for this was developed by Alan Eldridge working off of some work by Christopher Erickson as well. This is Alan Eldridge's, Eldridge's blog, The Last Data Bender. So if you want to head over there and check it out, he's got some great instructions here on how to work with it. But we'll be walking you through his technique today. So this right here is going to be our advanced hexman. Assuming I can type in. Okay. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is actually change how we have our hexbin X and hexbin Y set up. So right here, it's just a simple hex bin X, longitude, latitude, hex bin Y. What we're going to do is introduce a sense of scaling. So we want to come in first and create a parameter. We're going to call this hex bin sizing. And a float is just fine. So we'll create a parameter right there. Now we're actually going to come in and create a new version of our hex bin X and hex bin Y. Create a new calculated field. We'll start off first. We'll call this hex lat. So it's going to be our latitude that we're working with. This is going to be hex bin y, not the field, the function. Hex bin y. We're going to want our longitude multiplied by our new parameter, hex bin sizing. And then we want our latitude field multiplied by our parameter. And then we're going to divide it by our parameter. And it's throwing an error here because that closed it off. So right here, again, longitude times the sizing, latitude times the sizing, divided by the sizing. Those of you who have worked with bins in Tableau before or in, even inside of Excel, you'll recognize that what this is doing is artificially creating its own bins. All it is is a way to give us the ability to scale the bins that are being created. Go to hex bin latitude. We'll come in, we will duplicate that. Edit this right here. We'll make this our hex longitude and change this from hex bin Y to our hex bin X. And then it's the exact same formula, longitude times sizing, latitude times sizing, divided by the sizing. And then for both of these, we're actually going to come in and give them a geographic role. So if you right click on the field, come up to geographic role, our hex lat, we're going to set as our latitude, our hex long, do the same thing, geographic role, longitude. Now that we have our hex lat and hex long, the next step we're going to do is actually data densification. Data densification is an advanced technique in Tableau that's used to help pad your data, in essence, giving it access to values that don't actually exist in your data as a way to make it so you can avoid a whole lot of duplication of your data and use Tableau's built-in engine to make it so that you can draw some more custom marks on the view. The thing is, when we're creating this more flexible type of hex bin map, what we want to do actually is manually draw our own hexagons. So if you look back at the basic, we used the automatic, we used a custom shape, and we told it, hey, we want a hexagon in there. In this case, we're actually going to come and use the polygon chart type, and we're going to pass through these individual values for these vertices so that Tableau will draw a line between those six vertices and, and in essence, draw the hexagon for us rather than relying on a built-in shape. So in order to do that, we're going to need to go in and create really the basis of any data densification is a new field that has a value of one and then the max value that you need. Since there are six vertices on this, we're going to need six. So what we're going to do is actually come and create a new calculated field. We're going to call this two pad. Now, if you've seen our Sankey or our Sunburst tutorial, you'll 
know that we've done this using custom SQL before, there's actually another way to build out the one and six values. The idea is you need to have a value of one and a value of six on every unique combination of your fields that you're data densifying across or that you're padding across. In this case, we have our underlying zip codes and we have our two hex bins, these new hex bin lat, hex bin long that we just created. So we need to create a value of one and six for each unique combination of these two fields. You can do that using a level of detail calculation. What you can do is say if zip code, so we'll just look to the underlying data that makes up those hex bins, and we'll say it's equal to, then we'll say fixed hex lat, hex long. So basically this is saying if your zip code is equal to this fixed says at the unique combination of hex and hex lat and hex long, then we want min of zip code. Then one else six end. What this level of detail calculation does is it looks to each combination of hex lat and hex long and says, okay, look at the minimum zip code that's available there. And if the zip code you're looking at is that zip code, then give it a value of one. If it's a different zip code that still has the same hex lat and hex long, then give it the value of six. What this does is it creates the calculation inside of our data. So we have a new column. If we go and then we look at our data source, find two pad. Actually, it's funny, this fails, contains an aggregate calculation, which only contains meaningful data in the visualizations level of detail. So that's not as helpful, sorry about that. But what it's done is it's gone through and for each unique combination of those two, it's created a value of one and a value of six. So if I convert this to discrete, actually I'm just gonna drag it up, make it a dimension, drag out two pad, you'll see we have those values. We can drag out a number of records just to test that it's there. And it's actually not bringing back anything. Actually it is, sorry, because we're still on poly polygon. We'll do that. You'll see them, the majority of them have six and that's okay. But what we do have is that value of one. So that's one for every single one of our hex bins. Now to data densify that, you take your two pad and then you create bins. Rather than size of 1.515, make it a size of one. And then we have our two pad bin. We'll rename this, just calling it padded, similar to what we've done in our other tutorials. And now we have our data densified field available. So again, if we dragged out two pad, you see we have values one and six padded. We actually have values one through six. This has happened because Tableau, when you use the bin function, it's actually range aware. So it sees that there's a one, sees that there are six, and when it's saying, hey, I have bins of size one, I'm actually gonna pretend like there's a two, three, four, and five in your data set, even though those aren't actually there. Again, this is an advanced technique that lets you trick Tableau into thinking that there's data there when it actually isn't. Very helpful, very cool. Now, going back to this point, we need to tell Tableau where to draw these vertices, right? So we need to draw six of them, and what we're gonna do is take advantage of some geometry to tell it what this 60 degrees is. So going in, we're gonna create another calculated field called this angle. And what it is, is we're actually gonna take pi, which is a function built in to Tableau, returns the numeric constant of pi, 3.14 and change. We're gonna divide that by three. And then we'll multiply this by index. So the thing is, when you're working with data densification, you have to be comfortable working with table calculations. Index is your basic table calculation, returns the index of the current row in the partition. What it does is it gives you the ability to read values across those binned, uh, those binned, I guess, values again, that Tableau has just identified. So if I was to put two pad into this, you see that we have values one and six, but when we bring in index, then values will show up across all six of them. It's a really handy way to use it, and you'll see how things work as we continue on. Now that we have our angle, we're actually gonna come in and create two more calculated fields that are going to be the values that we use to build our hex chart. So we'll call this our map, because we're building off of a map. Map latitude is gonna be window average of the average of hex latitude. Then what we're going to do is add one, one divided by the hex bin sizing. Then we'll multiply that by the sine of angle. This one, honestly, is just a fancy bit of geometry. So you're taking the average of hex lat, which is just saying, hey, show me where this hex bin is 
on average, you have to have an aggregate function to a table calculation. So it's just, this will be the same for all values. So the average just returns that. Then you're going to add in a scaling factor with your one over the hex bin sizing and then multiply that by the sine of the angle. This is important to have the sine comprehend because we need it to comprehend that 60 degrees moving in the right direction, whether we're using latitude or longitude. So now we have our MATLAB. And instead of default table calculation being automatic, we're gonna come here and we're actually gonna want it to calculate using padded. Again, because this is data densification, we have to use that padded value for our table calculations to work. Now that we have MATLAB, we can duplicate that. Edit this, we're gonna make this map longitude. Come down here, change our hex lat to hex long, and then change our sine to cosine. Also computed along padded because we duplicated it, which is great. Now we come here, similar to what we did with our hex lat and hex long, we come up to our geographic role. We want our map lat to be latitude, map long to be longitude. And now we can actually start building our chart. This has been very intense. Great job following along. Sorry if you got lost with the calculations, please feel free to go back and pause the video, get them all set up. Because at this point, it gets very fun where we get to start building out our view. We'll drag map latitude up to rows, map longitude up to columns. It's gonna throw an error because these are looking to calculate along padded, which is what the default is. So if we drag padded in to detail, it's now gonna start being able to calculate. But then remember what I said, we wanna be drawing that hexagon. So we'll go to polygon. We're actually gonna drag padded to path. And now we'll grab our hex bin lat, hex bin long, bring those into our view. Sorry, we don't want them aggregated. So bring them up here. Drag that down to detail. Make sure that these are computing using padded. And there we have our automatic chart. So sorry, there was, when I dragged them up without padded being in the view, it lost its default table calculation. So we had to go in, click on this, compute using padded. When it's computing using padded, it then comprehends what your view is doing, then comprehends those additional value that we built in with data densification. And we have this great map that we've built. So right away, you'll see some differences, All right? So if we go back to our basic, first of all, there we go, we have the US. And you'll notice I had to manually move things around to make that work. Right here, we have our chart automatically built out to where it matches all of the data underneath. When we're looking at the sum of total wages here, in this case, we want to show total wages, but again, we can't just drag that out because it's data densification. So we need it to properly understand what the values are there. So if you look around here, say we drag total wages just to our detail, you'll see in some areas it's blank. So like for one, doesn't have a value for five, sorry, for one it does, for five it doesn't. I'm looking at padded there in the center. That's because the five doesn't actually exist in the data set. So we have to instead use a table calculation. We'll just call this wages. And we'll just say, hey, we actually want you to look at the window sum of the sum of total wages. Change the default calculation from there to padded. Now we've got our wages right here. Drag that up to color and you should see a very familiar chart. Use our green and our yellow that we were working with before. And you'll see that we now have the view, but with the added benefit that it's actually overlaid on a map. So if we came into our color and changed this down to something like 35%, you can see a lot of the underlying, um, the underlying boundaries and geographies that are there. Let's up it a little bit more. I still want to see the colors with the 65%. That's good. You can still see the underlying state lines. The great thing though, is we now have additional access. If we right click on hex bin sizing and show this, if we actually wanted to show this at a different level, so you notice right now it's the exact same. We got our 6.59 to 425 billion. Got the exact same thing here. But if we wanted to drill in a little bit, remember when we zoomed in in this one, we lost detail, nothing changed, nothing updated. In this one, let's say we zoom in, we'll just zoom in right over here to Southern California. But in this case, we'll actually change our hex bin sizing. Let's up it to five. Now our map automatically updates. Our hex bin chart automatically updates. 
and you can see the individual totals updating and you'll see that this key has updated as well because now we have smaller hex bins and so the values don't go as high. But now we have this great situation where no matter where we move, the hex bins are connecting to each other, they look really nice, and they're matching more of what the underlying data does. So in this one, it has the, the zip codes that make up these different hex bins underneath. But as you can see, when you get to some smaller areas, there actually are very few zip codes underneath. In some cases, it almost looks like there's none. So you still get the data that's there, and but the best part about it is you get this automatically built for you. So you can then come here and reset the size. It'll reset to the size of the map. Again, we're taking advantage of Tableau's built-in geographic capabilities, and you make, can make this whatever size you want. If you're looking at the aggregate, sometimes it's actually really nice to just leave it with the default one. That's what you would expect. That's what you would get with your standard basic hex bin. But then you can actually go in and you can drill in, say we want to drill into New York, then we could generally make it base size eight. And you can see the individual areas so right here is really where things take off in terms of total wages made. So there you go. There's a lot of great work out there on how to make these charts even better. So just a quick example of that. If you look here, you can tell that this size of hexagon is actually a little bit smaller than this one. That happens just because of the standard Mercator projection where the the earth gets skewed when you're trying to represent a sphere on a flat plane. There are ways to correct for that as well. Leave it to you guys to look up and find. But this has been the advanced tutorial. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe. We have new videos coming out every week across all different types of data science topics. Hopefully this one will help you with deploying things in your, uh, in your organizations and inside of Tableau. And hopefully it showed you some new ways for both data densification, but also just ways to look at how you use the Hexman function. Thanks. Bye.